everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm really excited to be able to have a program about Earth Day, which is coming up on the 22nd, and also to welcome back Katie McEwen, who has been kind enough to put together this program for us. I'm just going to give a little uh, biography of Katie, and then we'll get started here. Katie McEwen is a Passaic County Master Gardener and spent many volunteer hours doing public outreach and education about environmental issues. She served on the Wayne Environmental Commission and is very involved as a parent volunteer at Pine Lakes Elementary School. She is a member of the Friends of Laurelwood Arboretum and chairperson for the upcoming Earth Day celebration on Saturday, April 22nd, which is Earth Day, and that's from noon to four, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So thank you and welcome, Katie. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Thank you for always putting together these wonderful programs and for supporting the, the uh, our Arboretum so much. Let me just say hi to everybody. Hello. Um, if you're going to see this later, then hopefully um, you'll email me. I'll take questions at the end from our participants today, but I'll leave my email address at the very end. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. Um, I, as Patty said, my name is Katie McEwen. I live here in Wayne. I have two kids in the Wayne School System. Um, and I've spent many years um, trying to do grassroots education to my community um, through, through uh, vehicles like the library and public speaking to um, educate the public um, on a very person-to-person -person level about environmental issues. Um, I've found it's much more effective to reach out to your friends and neighbors and talk to them about what you're passionate about. Um, than to try and reach out on a on a broader scale. You know, I th I think it's a very effective way to communicate about issues that are so complex as our environmental challenges. So I just wanted to share with you. Um, let me just okay. So there's my name and here's the date. We don't need to know that. So this photo, if you're not familiar with it, it was taken in uh, from Apollo Eight. It's our first real view of ourselves from a distance. They call it the blue marble photo. They call it Earthrise. There's a few other photos that were taken um, like this similarly. If you look on the internet, um, you can look on the NASA website and they'll show you um, this image and several others. But it really changed our consciousness, consciousness um, about our relationship between us and our planet. It gave us some perspective and some distance figuratively and literally. Um, it's part of the catalyst that created um, a slew of legislation that helped um, bring us forward with our environment, um, with like the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency, the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, um, the uh, Endangered Species Act, and a lot of other legislation. It also, in 1970, uh, created in New Jersey the Department of Environmental Protection, which serves just the state of New Jersey. So after this somewhat post-war era in our country, people were starting to look toward other issues we're dealing with in our society. And the environment was fast becoming one because we had had a breakneck speed of industrial development. And we were just polluting at a just super rapid rate. People were starting to notice. You started to see issues, you know, photos of smog, um, issues with water contamination. Um, Rachel Carson came out with the book Silent Spring that talked about pesticides, insecticides, environmental damage. And people started to have a real awareness of environmental issues for the first time. So um, Gaylord Nelson, which was, he was a Senator at the time, um, decided that this would be a really good opportunity, a really good moment for us as a country to come together on a new issue, which is our natural environment. So that created what we know now as Earth Day. It's a holiday that we celebrate every year. I'm sure many of you or not all of you are familiar with it. Um, and it really gives us an opportunity. I like to say every day is Earth Day, <laughs> but it really gives us an opportunity to reflect 
and to reprioritize our natural environment. Um, the first Earth Day, millions of people got together. They actually planned it in a way I thought this was interesting when I did a little research about the history. Um, they planned Earth Day to get all those student activists, post-war student activists engaged in this topic, in this issue. They planned it in between spring break and finals. So they knew that students would be on campuses and would be available and present um, to participate in this. So there were tons of marches and rallies and millions of Americans because this was a uniquely American holiday when it at its creation, at its inception, made in the USA, Earth Day's made in the USA. <laughs> so we had, it was a very, very strong response, you could say. Um, just a brief timeline here so you can understand where we were and where we're going. Um, 1970 was the first Earth Day. So in 2020, we had the anniversary, unfortunately. The, that year I planned an event and we couldn't have it because of all the COVID issues, but um, we came back stronger this year. <laughs> um, we'll talk about the event that is planned for Wayne at the, as Patty said, at the end of at this presentation. Um, in 1990, that's significant, it's when Earth Day went global. So that's when this uniquely American holiday was expanded to the whole world. So over time, we've added more, more people to the movement, more countries to the movement, and more global awareness um, to this issue. So as of now, we had our first, day, first Earth Day, as I said, 1970. As of 2023, we have over a billion people involved in Earth Day activities every year. There's over 190 countries, which is amazing considering the first Earth Day, we started out with a few million. We're now at a billion people who are actively participating. So there's a theme for Earth Day every year. Last year was, uh, they had a theme of plastics, you know, plastics in the ocean and plastic waste. Um, I'm sure you saw a lot of um, issues with plastics on the news, especially in New Jersey with the ban of plastic bags and disposable one-use plastic um, products. So if you look back on the Earth Day um, website, earthday.org, you can see la previous year's themes. Um, one year was endangered species. You know, they try to make a different theme every year to bring awareness to a certain component of environmental issues. Um, so this year is investing in our planet, which really what they're trying to drive home here is a multi-level awareness, not just individuals, not just governments, but corporations, countries, you know, ev everything from the person to the to the globe and every level in between, to everybody to have to be mindful of their practices and to incorporate them because we there's not one person who can solve our environmental ills. It's gonna take all of us, every single one of us as a global community. So um, Kathleen Rogers, who's the president of earthday.org, which is you'll find the majority of information about Earth Day activities and previous themes on their website. Um, just a quote from her about coming together, like I said, multi-level approach instead of just one approach because the truth of it is a green future is a prosperous future is a healthy future so changing practices and taking a better approach is to help our environment with our progress with our development is really the only way to sustain our existence and the health of our planet um, I meant to put this on a different slide. I'm sorry. If anybody happens to participate in any Earth Day activities on the 22nd, which actual Earth Day, the 22nd is on a Saturday, which is amazing this year. We can all, at least most of us celebrate it on the same day. Uh, sometimes it's difficult because it falls on a weekday and we have to kind of move things around a little bit. 
But um, if you participate in anything and you use social media, um, you can use the hashtag Earth Day, hashtag Earth Day 2023, um, or this year's theme, which is uh, invest in our planet. So please, if you participate, um, use those hashtags to let everybody else know what, what you're doing that day. So on their website, there's a there's a multi, and I encourage you to, to visit it because there's just a huge wealth of information that we could not possibly cover in the few minutes that we have for a, a program like this. But there's, you know, if you want to learn about sustainable fashion, if you want to learn about um species die off and endangered species, if you want to learn about plastics or advocacy, or if you want to um, have your own Earth Day event and you want to register it on their site. Um, our event is not registered on the site because it's only for Wayne residents through the Wayne Parks Department. So um, Laurel Wood has, I'm sure all of you, if you visited there, has a limited parking situation. So <laughs> We need to make sure that we uh, give Wayne residents priority, but of course, all of you are welcome. Um, and there's some websites here that I wanted to share. The one I mentioned, earthday.org. The New Jersey DEP has um, their own website about milestones, and they have the year and different milestones that have been achieved by the department, the, the NJDEP. Um, the EPA, which is one of the agencies that was along with the DEP that was created from that spark um, of the creation of Earth Day. Um, and then there's also a great, on earthday.org, there's a great graphic website about 52 ways to invest in the planet. And it has all different facets of our daily life and our businesses and our and education to help us find the tools to communicate with each other about what our concerns are with um, environmental issues. I wanted to talk about, I do wanna have some, we'll, we'll talk about the event in a minute, but I really wanted to answer some of your questions, which is I wanted to give us plenty of time for that at the end of this, because there is not a really strong consolidated environmental presence in our town. We have the wonderful Wayne Environmental Commission. We have various different groups. In case you weren't aware, there's a green club at Wayne Hills High School. There is, I'm sure, some sort of green. I'm not as familiar with Valley because that's not my side of town. Maybe Patty knows because they're next door. But <laughs> they could possibly have a green club also. Um, there are various different garden clubs. Um, the, I believe Packnack has a garden club. I know Pines Lake has a garden club and my neighborhood Riverview has a garden club. Um, Passaic County Master Gardener's Office through Rutgers um, has their office in Wayne and they work very closely with Passaic County. Um, and there's some there's some other organizations. I'm sure there's tons I don't even know about. But my point is that there's not always a, a straight path to get in touch with all of these different people. And I think Earth Day gives us a really unique opportunity to get together and connect with each other and to talk about what our concerns are. Because we have a multitude of them in Wayne, such as flooding and we have um, several trees that we had to take down because of Dutch elm disease. You know, our parks and recreation department is very on top of that kind of thing. Um, and any tree removals need to be permitted and things like that. There's a lot of things going on in Wayne that maybe people aren't aware of. And it, a good way to remedy that is to talk to each other. You know, we've had a lot of time where we haven't been able to interact face to face. But the shining light that has come out of all of our difficulties the past few years is that more people than ever are interested in being outside and in touch and in and involved with their natural environment. One of the reasons I, I did serve on the Wayne Environmental Commission, one of the reasons I did resign is because I found that I really needed to participate more with kids 
my kid's age, my children are nine and 12, but I really wanted to get them, um, give them a sense of stewardship for the environment to really explain to them why this is important to them, why this is part of their future and part of their heritage, heritage, inheritance, whatever you want to call it. Um, we need to make sure that we are doing our best to hand over something that they can care for. Um, and the awareness I think is higher than ever on this, on this issue. And I think it's a value that um, it's really important for our youth to have, um, to, to have that sense of stewardship. So I would encourage all of you to come to the Earth Day celebration that we have planned. Um, the amazing and wonderful people at Laurelwood Arboretum asked me to help them plan this event. And I couldn't have done it without them. <laughs> it was really a fantastic experience and I'm really looking forward to it. We have uh, 200 saplings that we're gonna be giving away. Uh, we're gonna have kids from Pines Lake School preparing the saplings for everyone and labeling the variety of tree um, and giving you planting instructions and um, species in, like sp a sheet about what species you're getting. So we have 200 of those to give away. Um, the event is from 12 to four and we are gonna do it rain or shine. <laughs> Hopefully I said, we have no choice but to have good weather. It's, we just have to have good weather. <laughs> There's no other option. Um, we're going to have environmental groups there, such as Passaic County Master Gardeners and um, Pines Lake and Riverview Garden Clubs, but also the Native Plant Society, because um, we can we can we'd be happy to share with you why so many of us are passionate about native plants and how their resiliency, because they're by definition native, um, is better for our particular growing zone and climate. Um, there'll be horticultural experts um, available to answer. There's someone gonna be there from Bartlett's um, to answer tree questions. Um, we're gonna have activities for the kids. I know Pines Lake Garden Club has an activity and Riverview Garden Club has, a, has information about pollinators. So you can learn more about, the, I'm sure the kids, they usually love that kind of pollinator display, the birds and the butterflies. It's really fun for the kids. Um, <clears throat> and there's gonna be tours. Usually they're uh, limited tours on the weekends um, at Laurelwood, but we're gonna have tours available. Um, uh, and they're self-guided. You can do the self-guided tour if you wanna do that on your own. Um, and there's gonna, they're gonna be raffling off some planters, some lovely planters and some other items, there's gonna be a raffle. Um, parking does fill up quickly over there, as I mentioned. So there's gonna be a shuttle service provided by the Wayne Parks and Rec Department. So you can park at Pines Lake School, which is right down the street um, from the Arboretum and they will shuttle you over. Uh, I really think that it would be, um, we've never done an Earth Day celebration at Laurelwood before. Um, and I think that it's going to be a wonderful tradition that we can continue in the future. So I hope that we can get some Wayne residents to come out and participate. And it's wonderful that the library is supporting our efforts as they always do. <laughs> You'll see here my email, um, kmthemg at gmail.com. Um, feel free anytime to um, email me um, any questions you have. Um, also, if you have specific planting or, um, you know, um, plant related issues, the, the Master Gardener program has a hotline. So I can provide you with their, the hotline information if you need that. Um, I encourage all of you to go out and get your hands dirty, dig in the dirt. <laughs> it's very good for you. Uh, they've done scientific studies to say that the, the depression rates of people who go outside and, and dig around in the dirt are lower <laughs> than, than the general population. There's actually microbes in the dirt that give you uh, a happy feeling, apparently. So 
I think that's pretty amazing. And it's great to do, you know, I find as a parent, at least I'm speaking as a parent, there's just so many opportunities to sit inside and stare at a screen. And I do my best every day to fight against that. Um, you know, technology can be our friend, but it can also be a barrier to other things such as being outside and being in nature. So I encourage you all to come and participate in being outside with us. And I look forward to seeing all of you. And now you know what I look like, so you can come say hi. <laughs> Let me just tell you, Patty told me that we can only take questions on chat because it is a webinar format. So if you submit your questions in the chat, um, then we can answer those. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can, so you can see me. Um, this is a, a very important issue for me. I grew up in the 70s as a kid and I lived in California in the Bay Area, which was really um, an eye opener as to how things really can be done. Um, and California seems to take it very seriously, as you may realize with their gasoline, they have an extra tax on there because of the uh, emissions and such. I mean, it really is a, a, a very different state to live in. And then I came back here. Uh, so I have always been interested in this. I recently visited Montreal and they have an active program throughout their entire city of compost that um, I love that. <laughs> not only do you have your recycling and your garbage outside, but you have your compost been outside that is regularly collected um, throughout the entire city. And I believe I saw something that more cities are, are in the US are starting to adapt this. Do you know anything about uh, composting um, in this area or at least in New Jersey or even in, in the United States? I know of some composting. Um, I actually, I did a project in grad school, which is unfortunate several years ago so I'm sure a lot of things have changed but on municipalized composting which is what you're talking about um I would love to see Wayne municipalize their composting especially with I mean recently we had all these problems with garbage pickup and you know just garbage disposal issues how amazing would it be if we could deal with it on a localized level instead of you know every having trucks pick up our garbage and truck it to God knows where, probably Pennsylvania, um, because there's no room to put it in New Jersey anymore. So um, I would love to see municipalized composting. There are some subscription services that you can pay for and they will come, they bring you basically a bucket or a receptacle of some kind. You put your compostable items, they tell you exactly what's okay and what's not okay. Um, and they pick it up and they give you an empty receptacle and they make compost out of what you give them. And they can even give you back some of the compost that they've made, kind of, kind of like an exchange. Um, I started to look into that um, and started collecting like names and numbers to see if anybody wanted to do it because they need a certain number of people um, in a specific geographical area to make it environmentally feasible um, because you also don't want to be driving all over the place picking up one person here one person here because then you lose the environmental benefit um, but if I can I know of a friend who actually has a farm who's doing that so if you're interested I'll give you her information <laughs> it, it, it almost seems like a, a natural partnership would be to have the farms that um, do the, the I, I know that there's a name for their programs when they do the vegetable delivery where you sign up for mm -hmm. that monthly delivery. It seems yep. like it's a natural Farm thing. Share. They yep. Yeah, they, they drop off their uh, vegetables and their fruit. They pick up the compost. They can use it on their farm. They can share it with people along their route. Like it, that seems like the easiest way almost in, in some ways. Um, but it just is such a, a maybe wonderful we should, thing. Yeah, maybe we should talk to some businesses and in Wayne to see if anybody has the land and the means to uh, do a composting program. We could do a pilot program. I'm gonna go bang some rafters now and, and see, what, <laughs> see what I can do. Maybe I'll call Dana at Farmsview. She's the only farm left here. So um, yeah, I think it'd be a wonderful idea. It's, I mean, definitely, I mean, if you think about it from a, from a climate perspective, um, methane, which is produced by decomposing garbage basically 
um, at least organic, um, it's 10 times stronger than carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas, but it only lasts 10 years. So, you know, if we don't get a hold on our garbage situation, because the U.S. produces a staggering amount of trash compared to the rest of the world. Um, if we can get a hold on our garbage situation, we won't have as many spikes of like concentrated greenhouse gas issues. I mean, we still have carbon dioxide, which stays in the atmosphere for a hundred years. We're trying to reduce that, but in the short term, you know, that's why they talk about limiting um, meat intake because livestock also creates methane, but garbage is a much bigger issue that affects every single person, whether you're vegetarian, vegan, an omnivore, anything. Garbage is a huge issue for our society. And I, th I would love if everybody composted, that would be amazing. <laughs> Um, I know compost in the area is that, that um, in Wyckoff, Abba's farm is not that far from here. Oh, uh, yeah. And maybe there are another farm that could be tapped into to try to, to have some sort of agreement with. Um, it's, it seems like a win-win, but uh, I will help you uh, bang some doors if you would like. I think this is an important, a very important topic. Um, I've, I'm a huge recycler and always have been. Yeah. Um, and I like to recycle, reuse. I hate throwing out stuff and putting things in our garbage. Uh, and it just really gets to me. I saw a documentary recently that um, others may find of interest about the amount of garbage that is on Mount Everest um, is unbelievable because right. it's such a difficult place, of course, to access that a lot of the Sherpas have gotten together and have gone up to do waste disposal of, of just the oxygen tanks and the food wrappers and all the things that are just left behind, mm -hmm. um, not just at the base camps, but of course, as you go up the mountain. Um, and so that there's a really interesting documentary about it on either the free streaming service Tubi, I believe it was on, or Pluto. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you don't really think about that, but it impacts every aspect of our, our earth. It's just not, it's not where the people are living, it's where people visit and people go to. And I live in Ringwood and there's active, an active um, uh, group that helps to clear up the trails and pick up the garbage that people leave behind. Um, yeah. I thought by now we'd be in an area where we would be educated enough to know you carry in, you carry out. Um, but I think- Leave no uh, trace. <laughs> Earth, yeah, Earth Day is a great way to remind people of that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It is. Absolutely. It is. And even, you know, composting is tricky. So I don't feel bad. I, I've tried many times, to be honest, and failed. Um, I learned I learned a lot with the master gardeners about composting. But, you know, with two kids and a dog and, and the schedule, it's, you know, you have to monitor it quite a bit. So if, if anyone is out there and they're able to do it, I give them huge props for that. But I think that, you know, to speak to your point, the municipalized or service uh, subscription way of doing it is it really takes a lot of the guesswork out of out of it for pe for just regular people. I mean, I have all the knowledge and I still have a hard time. <laughs> it's the application I have a problem with. My first one, my first composter I had in the yard and the, our yard flooded and it got ruined and I got so discouraged. Um, and I tried again and it just didn't go very well. So I'm not, I'm not the composter, poster child, <laughs> the composter child. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are the garden state though. And I'm, and, and we're chock full we of garden. Are. So, you know, I just, if we could, uh, have a almost a central place where people could just come and get compost for the gardens like what a boon that would be and then of course it takes care of you know the garbage so yeah. um, well the community gardens in Wayne um if you don't know where the if anybody doesn't know where the community gardens are um Van Riper Hopper House on Berdan if you go you know kind of down Berdan and the high school is on Wayne Hills is on your right hand side you'll come up on on it on the left hand side, right next to Point View Reservoir, kind of across from where Skylar Colfax Middle School is. Um, the community gardens for Wayne is in the back of that property. And there is composting there for the people who are using the gardens. 
Um, obviously that wouldn't be available to somebody who wasn't, didn't have a garden plot, but um, if anybody's interested in, I don't know if the plots are all filled yet. I haven't checked. They said that they haven't had a problem getting them to sell out the past, I guess, last year, a couple of years ago, they had a hard time getting them all sold out, but um, there are garden plots and a community garden in Wayne. That's good to know. You had mentioned um, uh, some topics that we had actually previously covered, which you were you participated in. Um, I believe both of them uh, that are on the Wayne Public Library's YouTube page um, under our playlist for Green Solutions. One was improving stormwater runoff, and the other uh, that we had was about uh, planting a pollinator garden. So those are two items that you had mentioned that, um, and two solutions for helping our earth. Um, so if you're interested, they are on the playlist on the Wayne Public Library YouTube page. One thing to, um... I just wanted to mention also, you know, we talk about solutions. Um, there's been a big focus on solution the, solutions the past few years. I wanted to kind of go up a level and talk about like communicating and organizing kind of level. But um, one of the things that I'm going to be trying out is um, to change my lawn. One of the biggest carbon sequestering tools we have as homeowners um, or property owners or, you know, citizens is to control the nat your own natural environment outside where you live. Um, I'm going to be converting, I'll let you know how it goes, <laughs> converting our lawn to clover because it doesn't require, it hardly requires any mowing. Um, it doesn't require pesticides, like, um, herbicides or anything like that. It doesn't require fertilizers because we're on our waterway here. We have a river in, in the back behind our property. And I'm very careful about what we put on our lawn because water runs off into the river and you don't want fertilizers running off into waterways because it causes algae blooms and problems like that. Especially people, we have several lakes here in Wayne. Um, and you really want to be very cognizant of what you're putting on your you know, many people in our town have a big lawn and a lot of grass, right? So I'm going to be expanding my planting beds as much as my husband will let me <laughs> to try and reduce the amount of lawn we have and also basically let it go to the weeds because the weeds are not going to require the resources. If you recall last summer, we had a very wet spring, brutally dry, hot summer and a fairly wet fall. So everybody's lawns, if you weren't, you know, you weren't supposed to be watering them, some people did, um, they got scorched. And the more resilient native, local, whatever plants you can use that don't require so much, so many resources, the better off you'll be. Um, and a lot of people are resistant to that, but I'm gonna give it a try and, I think that eventually people will come around because, you know, lawns have the ability to really be our friends and not cost us so much money in chemicals and water and give us the ability to do things like sequester carbon. I saw even in some towns where, um, in, depending on the neighborhood, where there's a patch of grass that's between the sidewalk and the road. Um, yes, the hot zone. That, right, <laughs> that they suggest planting um, low maintenance ground cover plants there, which yeah. makes complete sense. And then they don't have to be mowed. They, they just uh, will do their thing. Hopefully people will, with dogs, um, especially would be mindful of uh, curbing their dogs. Uh, but it seems like a, a great solution uh, to put into those patches of grass. Yeah, they can, you can get things, you can get plants that are salt resistant. Um, as far as something like clover, it's resistant to, as, as you said, if you have pets, like pets are going to do their business in the yard. So they're resistant to, you know, like the dead patches you see on people's lawns when their <laughs> dogs, the dogs are using the lawn. <laughs> um, but there's, yeah, that, that hell strip or hot strip that they call like in between the sidewalk and the, and the street, um, it's, that's a tough place for things to grow. And I have to, I have to give whatever grows there a lot of credit. 
it is quite resilient. <laughs> Definitely. Now, what kind Definitely. of tree saplings are being given away at the Earth Day event on the 22nd? Uh, that is a really good question. Uh, Redbud, I believe, is one. I should have had a list. Um, there is, I think one of them is white pine. And I think there's an oak. They, they would be native species, of course, and not elm because we have, or ash, I'm sorry, not ash because we have those emerald ash borers um, is a problem in our area. We've had to take, the town has had to take a lot of ash trees down. So none of them would be susceptible to emerald ash borer, but um, yeah. So I think those are the three varieties. I, I'm assuming that's, uh people will be given the guidance as to which trees yes. are best in the, what part of their uh, property, whether it's uh, shade or sunny or uh, what kind of soil and such. Yes, we have info sheets for, for each to give out, you know, we have a how to plant, you know, like how deep to make the hole and everything. Um, and then a label with what variety you're getting, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, an info sheet on each species. I'm really excited for your Earth Day event because this is a, as it's been advertised, is a family event. And this is the opportunity to start educating our youth at a young age so that they will then become conscious of, of how it, every action that we have impacts our Earth. And hopefully that they will take it um, to heart and then grow into adults who then teach their kids how important our Earth is and that what we need to do to preserve it. I certainly hope so. And even if even if there's people who see this after Earth Day or if there's people on here that um, are not able to make it to the event, <clears throat> I encourage you to find a young person and take them out into nature and talk to them um, about why it's important to take care of it and preserve it. I grew up down in South Jersey and I grew up with beach cleanups. That was that was my kind of indoctrination into the environmental movement um, was, you know, we and trees. I mean, you don't see kids climbing trees anymore. But <laughs> you get to know trees a bit when you climb them. Um, so I encourage you to um, plant together, even go outside, read a book together in, in nature. Um, they have things now like forest bathing. I've never tried it personally, but you go out and you just kind of commune with the outside. Um, go to Laurelwood Arboretum or go to the New Jersey Botanical Gardens, which is up in Rigwood. Um, the, you know, around Mother's Day, their lilacs are just stunning. Um, so I encourage you to do that. Um, just find a way to be outside, even if you're going to throw a ball around um, and really be part of your natural environment. The rest will follow. <laughs> I like your op optimism, and I'm I'm uh, going to follow you there. Um, I think a little education will go a long way, and and uh, we can really preserve and, and enhance and and encourage our environment to to grow to what it should be. Definitely, I'll come visit you in Ringwood. You can help me. <laughs> I get intimidated by all the hiking trails up there. I'm afraid I'll get lost. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will be happy to help you the best of the ability. And, and um, if we get lost, and there's always a way out. <laughs> <laughs> it's New Jersey, you know. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for taking the time to share such important information with us today, Katie. And I hope uh, that we all can follow through um, on one, even just one or two steps of, of what we could do for our planet. Check out the resources that um, Katie has mentioned, which I'll, I'll also include those uh, URLs at the end of this program. And I wish everyone can attend on uh, Saturday, April 22nd. It is the Earth Day event at Laurelwood Arboretum. That is from 12 noon to 4 p.m. There are shuttles available and um, it is uh, the location, if you're not familiar with Laurelwood Arboretum, is 725 Pines Lake Drive West. Um, and then if you have any questions or want more details, their website address is www.laurelwoodarboretum.org. So thank you again and happy birthday, everybody. Thank you, Patty. <laughs>